humorous routine is protocol is an AP and lateral view. CR technique would be about around 6 to 10 MAS, 66 to 70 KBP. And ideally, humorous is image using a bucky, which essentially I mean a grid, if possible, okay? AP humerus, you're going to include uh, from the shoulder to the elbow. You need both joints. Central ray for this one is fairly easy to the mid humerus. If you're using the bucky, do not use the AEC. You're going to want to use your own technique because of where the cell might fall. They're just going to hold their breath, 40 inch SID. In most of the rooms, you can turn the collimator and collimate more tightly to the arm. Try not to allow the soft tissue of the arm to overlap onto the ribs. I would bring this patient's arm a little bit away from the body, similar to this picture here. The epicondyles are parallel to the board. Watch the elbow. That's your key for the true AP humerus position. Don't allow the elbow to be in, in an external oblique position. How do you evaluate it? Do you have all the anatomy? Do you have the shoulder joint? Do you have the elbow joint? Are your epicondyles parallel? It's in true AP elbow position and the soft tissues aren't overlying the ribs. You're also gonna see in the AP view this greater tubercle in profile here up on the shoulder area. The lateral humerus, you can either do in PA position as this image is identifying here, or you can do it in AP if the patient is able. They're gonna internally rotate the arms so the back of their hand is pressed up against their leg. That allows the epicondyles to be perpendicular to the image receptor. Some patients may need to bend their elbow a little bit to get this position just for a little bit of comfort. Don't bend it too far because then you're gonna have to use a wider field here. Again, same centering and hold their breath. If they need to be lateral, it's the same position. Internal rotation, get those epicondyles perpendicular to IR. On this one, you're gonna see the lesser tubercle in profile and the epicondyles should be superimposed here. This should look like your lateral elbow image. Some repeatable errors. So you can see this good image here, the epicondyles are superimposed. You have an open joint space for the elbow. This image here, the elbow is not in true lateral position. The epicondyles are not superimposed. This patient most likely had their hand across their stomach and it wasn't in good position. So you would need to repeat to obtain a lateral elbow for this patient. Again, this is a poor lateral humerus. If your elbow looks like this, you're not in the correct position. If the patient has a distal fracture, these are some options on how to obtain that distal lateral image. If they have a um, fracture here, you can do this cross table view, similar to that of a lateral elbow. If the patient's lying on their side, you could even do it this way. Transthoracic humerus is used for fractures of the upper third humerus. So up here, right, that patient, if they have a fracture of upper third of their humerus, they're not going to be able to rotate that elbow into a lateral position. They're not going to internally rotate their arm for you, okay? So what you're going to do is place the affected arm up against the image receptor. You're going to raise the unaffected arm up and out of the way. And you need to shoot through the thorax. That's what transthoracic means. You need a high technique, so around 63 at 80. If they're a smaller, fragile patient, you could lower it a bit to 40 at 80, but remember, you gotta penetrate all of this. If the patient's on a stretcher, for us in the ER, you're gonna have to use the 60 inch SID because the tube hits the stretcher at 40. Again, supine, same idea, affected arm closest to the imaging plate, unaffected arm raised up, shooting across. So upper third fracture for transthoracic. You may see a tech utilize a breathing technique for this, um, but we tend just to skip that in our clinical area. Non-trauma shoulder. With all of your shoulder patients, you are gonna ask the patient, what happened? What brings you in? If they tell you they've just had pain, they haven't experienced any trauma, you're simply gonna do an AP external view and an AP internal view. These are a CR technique example, eight to 
to 12.5 at 66 to 70. I believe our digital room down at Main Street is four mass, so about half of the CR around the same KVP, all right? External rotation shoulder is almost exactly the same position as your AP humerus, right? Looking similar? Now we are just going to use a 10 by 12 crosswise. Your centering is one inch inferior to the coracoid process. And in lab, I, I know I always call this the divot. It's where their shoulder sort of sinks in. Divot will not be on your test and it won't be on your boards, but it's a Megan tip, okay? Um, so you wanna include in your light field the SC joint all the way over a little bit past the humerus with your light field. They're just gonna hold their breath. Again, in this position, the epicondyles are parallel to the image receptor. What are you looking for on your external rotation? You're looking for the greater tubercle profile laterally. Okay, here's that greater tubercle, that bump here. Internal rotation is the same as the humerus. They're just gonna put the back of their hand up against their leg, rotating internally. Your epicondyles are now perpendicular to IR. Same centering, so one inch inferior to coracoid process. Again, the divot, right? 10 by 12 crosswise, holding respirations. And on this one, you're looking for the lesser tubercle. So internal is lesser, external greater. Right? Here's the lesser. What I just said, external greater, internal lesser. Trauma shoulder. If your patient has had trauma to their shoulder, you're gonna do different views. For our facility, our protocol for trauma includes a grashy, a Y view, and an axillary shoulder. These may vary per facility that you're at, so make sure and ask your technologist if you're at an offsite or if you go work somewhere else, they might have separate protocols. But for us, this is your trauma protocol. Even if your patient walks in, and said, I got in a car accident a week ago, you're gonna do the trauma series. The grashy is for the glenoid cavity. So I always remember GG glenoid grashy. This is a 30 to 45 degree oblique toward the affected side. So the hurt shoulder is closer to the board. Your central ray is a slightly different than your AP shoulder. It's just two inches inferior instead of one inch inferior to that coracoid process. Um, still same cassette size, still on the Bucky, really similar technique, all right? So you can see here for the Grashy, this shoulder is the affected shoulder. It's closest to the image receptor. The central ray is shooting through. We're looking to open up this joint space right here. This opening right here where my pink arrow is going, this is the glenoid cavity and it's open. It's not superimposed with the humeral head. All right, so nice um, open space here. The scapular Y. It can be done AP or PA depending on your patient ability and your clinical site protocol. The PA allows for reduced breast, breast tissue dose. So that is um, sort of a radiation safety. But if the patient is a trauma patient or they're having severe pain, we tend to use AP. I find AP to be easiest to visualize as a technologist. You are going to use this view looking for dislocation. Um, it is a 45 to 60 degree oblique away from the board, centering to the proximal humerus, two inches below the top of the shoulder. I switch my cassette to lengthwise for this. So it's looking for dislocation. So the humeral head should essentially sit within this Y shape. And this is your acromion coracoid, and this is the scapula coming down, superimposed over the humerus. In this image here, you can see that the humeral head, it's not where it's supposed to be. So that patient's dislocated. Again, this is an anterior dislocation. The humeral head should be over here. Posterior dislocation, eh, it's back here. Okay, axillary. There's a couple ways to obtain an axillary shoulder. 
This one is the inferior superior method. If the patient's on a stretcher or your patient is laying down on the table, you might use this method. Raise the patient up on a little bit of a bump. Extend the arm out as close to 90 as possible. Most patients with a possible dislocation won't be able to do that, but you try your best. The cassette goes at the superior border and you're gonna angle in to the axilla. You're gonna shoot inferior, exit superior. This is what it should look like, ideally. The sitting option, if your patient um, is upright and this may be an easier option for you. They sit on the side, you really need to extend the arm up and over the cassette, tucking that cassette far into their rib cage here. And you may need to utilize a five to 10 degree angle to get the shoulder onto the imaging plate. You're gonna use a non-grid exposure for this one. Clavicle, routine views for clavicle, uh, our AP and axial. At our site, we use a 25 degree cephalide angle. Some examples of technique, these would be CR and a digital technique, maybe four, four to five mass, all right, so a half. We do an AP and an axial. The centering is the same, mid clavicle. I use a 10 by 12 film size and just collimate down to the clavicle itself. You want light field just past SC joint and then light field just past AC joint on this one. So this is the straight AP. The technologist has then angled their tube cephalad. Your textbook gives you a 15 to 30 degree cephalad angle as an option. We use 25 degree angle at clinical. So straight AP and then the AP axial. We can't do a lateral clavicle, so the axial just gives the radiologist another view option. Scapula, our scapula routine is an AP scapula and a Y view scapula. The AP technique will be really similar to that of your shoulder, and Y view technique will be uh, essentially the same as your Y view for Y view shoulder. AP scapula, you're gonna center to mid scapula. What does that mean? <laughs> two inches inferior to coracoid process and about two inches medial. Oh, that says medical, it should say medial from lateral border. So two in, two down, right? You wanna extend that arm out of the way, kind of bringing that scapula to the lateral border. Textbook gives you an orthostatic breathing suggestion. At clinical, we just do a shoulder technique and have them hold respirations. You wanna be able to see all of the scapula, all of the borders. The Y view, again, it's the same technique, our same degree of angle for the oblique, 45 to 60 degree oblique. Most often done AP, but it can be done in the PA position. For this one, I simply want you to bring the patient's arm away from the scapula. So in lab, I'll show you how to have them reach across to the other arm and grab onto the elbow just to see the scapula more clearly. Anatomy, please make sure you know this anatomy. And just some examples. These are 3Ds from CAT scan. I think they're 